pour l'avenir radieux de notre pays, la patrie ou la mort. Gasha. Hi guys. Thank you for joining in. Can you please share to your timelines and share to your network as usual? Please, please, please. Thank you. I'm doing the same while I wait for eight o'clock. Yes. Please continue to share while we wait for others to join in. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. We are on the woman experience. Hi, Adeline. <laughs> Hi, Joel. Hi, Tisha. Hello. Hi, Maviki. Hi, everyone. Thank you guys so much. We're starting in a minute. We're just waiting for us all to join and then we are ready to go. Hello. Can anyone tell me if my internet is acting up today? Because I feel like it is. So I'll apologize in advance for that. Hi guys, thank you again for joining me and I appreciate you for always being on time. I really love this little community we're building and I'm grateful for each and every single one of you watching right now. So um, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the woman's experience with Goretti. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you here. You you know that as the audience, you're the third guest because your participation. We're here to get our voices heard. We're here to listen in on conversations that affect the life of a woman, a woman's experience in general. And your contribution goes a long way into changing those stereotypes, into educating, into empowering the women, folk around the world, and some of our men who join in every um, Wednesdays at, and Fridays at 8 p.m. on the Goretti Experience page to share in this conversation. So for that, I applaud you, I thank you, and um, I'm really excited today because today we have a movie star, Cameroon's own movie star. I'm so happy to have uh, her and so honored that she accepted to join us today. So um, our conversation today is centered around the question, centered around love. The question we're asking today is how far will you go for love? We hear all the time, I'm in love, I'm in love. I mean, 
think about that for a minute. I'm in love. What emotions does it does it does it um, bring up within you? Does it make your heart flutter when you think of what, about being in love? How does it make you feel? Are you in love now? Are you in love with your partner? Or are you just coasting? You know that period in a relationship where you're just coasting? <laughs> Is that where you're at? But even if you're at that period, you must have felt love before. And go back. I would just want you to put yourself back in that frame of mind of being in love. How it made you feel. How it didn't make you feel. And think about the things you did for love. Did you go overboard? Why did you go overboard? Uh, did you go overboard because you you thought that's what you were supposed to do or did you go up overboard because hmm you were trying to overcompensate so that that and more is what we're going to be talking about tonight but first i need to bring our celebrity on <laughs> i can see her smiling backstage <laughs> I need to bring our celebrity on. We don't have too many celebrities in Cameroon, but this one is a true celebrity and, and she's worth her weight in filmmaking and in just being a voice and an influencer within the Cameroonian sphere, movie sphere to, to really earn that title of celebrity. So I'm so excited to bring a really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girl. If you have never seen this girl, let that picture tell you what you expect to see. <laughs> if you've not heard of this girl, let that picture give you a little bit, an expectation of what and who she is. She is the producer of the raving movie of the moment, the um, Saving Bango, which is currently showing on Amazon Prime. So if you haven't seen it, please, 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 please make sure after this, you go and watch it. So without further ado, hi, Steffi. <laughs> Have you joined the stream? Steffi? Yes. What is happening with my internet? Guys, can you tell me if my in internet is acting up from your end? Because from my end, it, it feels like it's glitching. Stephanie, do you find that I'm glitching when I talk? No, it's good. No, is it coming? Okay, because from my yeah, end, I see. Nice, so guys, please, can you just tell me if it's glitching? Just let me know because it feels really weird. I feel I, I, I see my mouth moving way after I've spoken and it's <laughs> it's throwing me a bit off. Anyway, hi Steffi. Sorry, I need I probably needed to do a drum roll. Yes, Steffi's on the show. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the woman experience with Goretti, darling. Thank, thank you so you much so for honoring much. my invitation. Thank you, thank, you, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So you have some fans already in the comments who are saying hi to you. you. Hello. 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 That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so Steffi, I mean, we're going to go into our conversation for tonight, but first let's talk Saving Bango. Hmm? I mean, you guys have done a you, and I know that your producing partner was uh, Julia Gam. Yeah. yeah. And you guys have done a, such a fantastic job with, um, marketing that movie and and bringing it to the Cameroonian audience at large, especially those of us in the diaspora, who are constantly asking for where we can watch Nigerian movies. Uh, did I just say Nigerian Cameroonian movies? So we just want to thank you guys for that. <laughs> but um, so yes, yeah, so how was the experience all together before we even start to play a clip? I mean, that story is it's a hard one. So what made you choose that particular story? I'm sure against all the hundreds of scripts that young writers present to you, why did you choose that story, Saving Bangor? Yeah, like you rightly said, I had other, you know, scripts in mind to produce at the time, but, you know, sometimes God just sends you this, you know, this amazing story through someone, you know, to bring it to life. So what basically happened was, um, I was having a conversation on this fateful day with my my colleague Lino Lovett, who is the scriptwriter of the movie, right? And I was just telling him about the script I had in mind to produce, and he was like, "Oh, 
I was telling him, like, I really want to produce a movie that is not like the cliche movie that will just feel like, oh, Steph is going to do this because she's this shining Steph. She's going to produce a glamour movie and stuff. Like, I just want to do something different, something that mm -hmm. really speaks to my soul, right? So mm -hmm. he told me he had the perfect story, you know. So he started narrating the story and, you know, it just, it just got me. And I was like, mm, Lino, we need to get somebody to write this you know develop the story to actually write the script and he was like no i can i can write a script you know and i was like hmm. <laughs> have, you, have you ever written a script before you know have you ever written yeah. a script before you know? and he was like hey give me a try so i was like it was a challenge right so i just told him like if you get the script this is what i'm gonna pay you for the script so he went to work got the script I read the first draft. It was amazing. It just blew my mind. He got the final draft. We sent it to be translated because we had this conflict. Either we do it in English or we do it in, in Pidgin. But we realized mm -hmm. that doing it in English, it will not bring out the emotions that we wanted to give and the authenticity that we wanted the movie to have, right? So we decided to yes. translate the script from English to Pidgin and shot the movie in Pidgin. Oh, so I didn't even know you had to translate. I mean, I just as you the guest who just did it is in English actually. So we translated. We got Anne Noreen on board who translated the script to Pigeon. Anne Noreen is such a fantastic he's artist in general. Guy. He's, he's just a, a damn good and, film. Yeah, brilliant filmmaker. Yes, yes, yes. So I mean. And now the the the, the story and saving now, Bangu, that was the, the story is out there. I mean, from the beginning, we knew this movie was gonna explode. You understand? But the thing is, it's not just about knowing that the movie is gonna explode. It's about making it to explode. That that process mm -hmm. of making the audience to connect to the movie, and then it creates this explosion. Yes, Steph. So what I found really um worrying as a filmmaker was because we all know what has been happening in the northwest and southwest with the, the unrest that's been happening with our people but i was very interested to see that you guys actually went to a village setting where was that movie shot where's what with what uh, city or Sibibang village was right? shot in, in Munduni. it's a village in the southwest province it's just a village after mm -hmm. the, the 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 plantation the oil plantation mm -hmm. yes okay so was there no was there no fight? I'm sorry. Sorry if I'm if it, was, I keep, I... it was a very crazy period. It was at the heat of the crisis when we went to shoot that project, actually. And that was a risk we took. I don't even know till, till date. I don't know what I actually told my team to convince them to go to that village because myself, I wasn't really sure going to that village until the last day. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I still looked at myself in the mirror and asked myself if I want to put myself in this situation. And but I just had this gut feeling, me just telling me, like, go, everything is going to be okay. You know, and we got by our side, everything just went really well. I mean, there were scary days. There were days we couldn't sleep at night because we were scared, like, we might get attacked and things like that. There were days we were even threatened. Mm -hmm. You know, there were days, you know, civilians who pose as police people who come to us, you know, and just try to make us feel uncomfortable and stuff like that. It, it wasn't an easy process, you know. Wow. Yeah. You will never know that looking at the beautiful art you guys made. Oh, you will never know what we're going through, especially oh. shooting in a village where we had no electricity, no potable water. We had to go and take a bath every day uh, at the river, like all the villagers in that village, you know, practically mm -hmm. just take off your stuff. Imagine you I mean, we're all colleagues in the industry, but we've not been able to share this kind of intimate space before. And you guys have to just take off your clothes and just go into the river and shower together and take a bath and stuff like that. It's like, it's like crazy. So it was a crazy experience. Wow. So I commend you guys for that. I'm sure everyone who is, who is listening, right, guys, you guys need to see some of the things that we go through just to produce this art. That is why when, when it's done, we are forever calling on you. Just don't support it for, for the sake of the fact that it's a Cameroonian film. Sometimes yeah. support it for the work that the goes work into that it. Yeah, yeah because we, we take a lot of risk doing this film, this movies, making movies. So you got the perfect lead characters for this movie i mean everybody held their end in this film every single character you guys did an amazing job with the casting how was the process for you guys 
So the casting process for me, when we started casting and we got Onyama to play um, the lead uh, female character, Bango, you know, Onyama is a star actress. She's an amazing actress. And this role actually just fit Onyama like perfectly. I mean, there's no two Bangos when you look at her performance in this movie, it could only be her. So when mm -hmm. we got Onyama, what I wanted for the male, uh, the male lead uh, character, I wanted a fresh face. I wanted mm -hmm. somebody that we had not seen before. So that was why we, we organized the casting and it's during the casting that we found all this. Okay. So for, for those who are yet to go on Amazon Prime to watch Saving Bango, let me just show you a clip of, of why I am so impressed by the casting of this particular movie, Saving Bango. We go back inside now. I've been moving me for you, King Small. Doctor said, we go inside. I see my mommy. Sweetie. If you find something. Even one more, maybe, but... But with you. I can't forget to you say bye-bye. And who called doctor? John. I don't get powerful fight again. I don't die. Stop the foolish. I believe me, Marco. Go, Zan. Wow, <laughs> even though I've seen that film, but the the emotions still get me every single I still time. I feel when I watch it. I still cry when I watch it. Isn't it crazy that, you know, most of us, we don't want to watch our work because we start feeling uncomfortable, but I've watched Steven Bango over 10 times and I still, you know, want to watch it all the time. I mean, it's worth it. It really is worth it. If you haven't seen it yet, Saving Bango is showing on Amazon Prime. Please go, go support it. It's an amazing film. A really wonderful film, as Adeline says. And if you're just joining us, hi, guys. Thank you for joining in because I see a few numbers popping up. Welcome to the Woman Experience. Our guest for today is the very talented, very beautiful, very sweet <laughs> 782, who is the producer of the film we're talking about today, um, Saving Bango. One of the producers, she produced in collaboration with Julia Gam. Yes, Gam or Gam, right? Gam. Julian Gam. Yeah, Julian Gam. And uh, we cannot talk about saving Bango without mentioning the director of the film because the, the, oh. the shots of this film Kanye are Kwai. brilliant. Kanye brilliant. Kwai. Amazing, amazing directors. One of my best directors. I'd worked with Kanye quite before. But, and I just knew like Kanye Kwai was just a perfect director for me to work with for this movie, especially after watching his movie, A Good Time to Divorce, you know, and his way of telling stories, his he was just a perfect person for this movie, to direct this movie. He really was. He did such an amazing job. He did. I mean, when I, I, I contacted him pri pri privately after watching this just to commend him on his choice of shots. Yep. You couldn't take that from him. They were beautiful. Yeah, He's an amazing director, a good storyteller. He yeah. knows how to just, you know, bring you into the emotions and everything, you know. Brilliant storyteller. Hi, uh, DJ Takeaway. Hi, he's saying hi to us. DJ Takeaway hi. is one of our 
big time DJs in the UK. Hi, uh, Rosaline, Adeline, Victoria Cooper. Clem Quenty says, an amazing piece of art, Saving Bango. When you hear that, Steffi, as a producer, how do you feel as a filmmaker? I feel fulfilled because this is why we do films for the yes. audience to appreciate. This is like, I cry most of the times when I read all these comments, like, it's just so wonderful because most people that like when they're congratulating, they're like saying, oh, congratulations, Stephanie, congratulations. They're throwing all the flowers to me, you understand? But at the end of the day, people need to understand that filmmaking is a teamwork, you understand? Although I'm the mother of this movie, but I wouldn't be able to do this movie without the amazing team that I had and without, you know, the sacrifices and the efforts that they put into, you know, making this movie become a reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those for those who are yet to see Saving Bango, uh, can you give them just a synopsis of the film? Yeah. So Saving Bango is a story of a boy named John. He's the breadwinner of your family. You know, he comes from this family that goes that is full of wastefulness, a drunken dad, a drunken, you know, other brother. His sisters are just there around the house doing nothing, getting pregnant and stuff like that. And he has this dream of going back to school, you know, mm -hmm. finishing his education and becoming somebody in life so that he could take better care of his family, you know. And that in this village, he meets this girl who is called Bango, who is also going through her own, you know, major you know, difficulties in life, you know, a sick grandmom, she has an illness, cancer, and she's just struggling through life and she's rejected by the community. Mm -hmm. So she meets uh, John who falls in love with her and they go through their struggles, you know, they try to overcome their struggles, the sacrifices, love and all of that. So it's just about wastefulness, love, cancer, ignorance, you know, alcoholism and you know all of those things that we see in our society nowadays that are very relatable in the you know there's always this family in every neighborhood you're in yes you see this typical you know wastefulness going on one person yes. room, everyone is just trying to like you know hang on you know this mm -hmm. breadwinner we have so many people who are in the, you know in the diaspora what the breadwinners of their family trying to make things work back home you know going through their own life and their own dreams and their own relationships you know mm -hmm. just trying to make things work overall so i think that's you know what saving bango is all about it's a very relatable movie you know powerful love stories sacrifice you know and just you know everything that we can relate to as you know Africans and yeah. especially Cameroonians because of the language we choose to shoot the movie in, the location, mm. you know, and all of that. That, that. I mean, that's a brilliant, you sold it so well. And I just want to pick up on something that you said. Bushfallas, toot your horn, because a lot of us are truly the breadwinners for a lot of our families. And I think that so every now and then we should give ourselves a pat on the back because we're doing a fantastic job supporting our families back home and also keeping the economy alive. So yes. it's time to toot our horns just that little bit more here yeah, because fabulous job, guys. Going back to Saving Bango, I'm just gonna play a, a clip talking about this kind of useless <laughs> fathers that we sometimes have in Cameroon. And then you talk us through what was happening in that clip. Okay. I get some very important talk. Well, I want to talk now. I think, say, I know I do my work fine, like Papa for look on now. Papa, you think not think? Hmm.
try at all. If you haven't seen Seven Bago, please go and see. It's showing on Amazon Prime. Um, is it is it is it now available for the US and Africa on Amazon? It's available, it's available for the US and the UK, and it's still being um, reviewed for Canada, Germany, and France. So in okay. the next couple of weeks, it's going to be released for those you know. Countries. So it's coming to you, but it's it's a really brilliant film. It's <laughs> Just a little patience with this COVID nineteen going on. Things are processing a little bit slowly, so. Of course, of course, yeah. understandable. So, um, <laughs> by the way, those actors, the actors in that film are all excellent. Honestly, I can't, I cannot to my horn and I'm so so proud of the work you guys have done and the work that we all are generally doing in the film industry. I really am proud of us. So I want to. <laughs> I want to talk about that. So the character, the lead characters in the film, like she explained, John, John and, and Bango. So John fell in love with Bango. Bango was considered a witch in the, in the community because she had, what, because of her strange eyes, I think? Well, because um, I, don't, I don't want to give any spoiler alert, but Bango was going through something that the villagers did not understand, mm -hmm. were ignorant about. You understand her illness, her mm -hmm. circumstances in life, they were ignorant about. I don't want to give too much. So they consider her a witch because of something they do not understand. And it's a typical African um, you know, mentality in our communities, especially the villages and all of that. If people don't when people don't understand something, they just turn to, you know, start saying it's witchcraft, you know, mm -hmm. all these kind of things and all of that. So that's why they consider Bango a witch, because of ignorance. They did not understand her illness she was going through. They did not understand the circumstances surrounding her life and everything you know mm -hmm. about her. Yeah, so they didn't, but John fell in love with her iris, uh, regardless of yeah, all yeah, Regardless of whatever, like the moment John laid his eyes on Bangu, he fell in love with this girl without even knowing who she was, what she was going through or anything. Mm -hmm. It was love at first sight. Cupid, Cupid shot his arrow and it got yes. John in the heart. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and it was so believable, honestly. I'm going to play a short clip of their love so that it, so that, that will lead us into our conversation for tonight because I'm sure people want to join into the uh, our conversation. No, it's that. We don't know. Sorry, I don't know if you read. I say that I'll be the one go school. Picking the be around me. Say I get wish. Say I resemble wish woman. And then big mommy no be getting money for send me for school for different side. Wait it down top. Nah, John likes Bango. No, John likes Bango plenty. You know like how? I like how. <laughs> John. You just feel my heart. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I like him. She has a haven't seen Saving Bango, please make sure you watch it. It's showing on Amazon Prime. It's Saving Bango. It's a must watch. It's a beautiful Cameroonian film. The, I mean, every the cast, the crew, you guys did such an amazing job. I can't commend you enough. Thank it is such a beautiful you. film. Thank if you're just joining us, because I see a lot of new faces. Hi, thank you for joining. Welcome. 
<laughs> Welcome to the woman experience with Goretti. Our guest today is Stephanie Toom. She's a Cameroonian filmmaker. She is she she she's earned the term celebrity. She's our Cameroonian celebrity, and she's they've done she's done with her team such a fantastic job with this movie Saving Bangle, which is all the rave at the moment. So if you haven't seen it, please go to Amazon Prime and watch Saving Bangle. So John. The things John went, for those of us who have seen the film, the thing, the, the lengths John went to prove his love for Bango is what made us ask these questions. Like, how far would you go for love? Because that was true love, Stephanie. I'm throwing this now to our audience. How far, what are some of the things that you have done for love that you look back in hindsight and say, hey, was that me? Please, we need your voice because we are an interactive community here at the Woman Experience, and our third guest is people who are watching our our um, our audience. So let us hear your voice. Let us hear your voice. What are some of those maybe downright embarrassing things or those right. <laughs> those in hindsight really stupid things you've done for love, or those really amazing and sweet things that you've done for love? Like how far have you gone for love? I would like to know, Steph, I want to hear your experiences. So what was that one thing that you've done for love that you turned back and say, hey, did I really do this? <laughs> I don't have only one, but I have two. I mean, oh. two that have marked my life deeply. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so the first, the first one I did, actually, this is like, you know, when I was still a teenager, about um, 17. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I don't even want to say the real age, maybe 16. <laughs> <laughs> so this was like my first love right mm -hmm. so i fell in love with this guy you know i was still in secondary school and i fell in love with this guy I was in university right he was much older than me so my family was against it i was too young to know what i was doing and all of that but you know at this age when we're teenagers we feel like we know it all we've yeah. arrived you know nobody can tell us nothing mm -hmm. you know we're popping <laughs> this guy and you know, my family was just crazy. They, they just went crazy. You know, they mm -hmm. just started bringing problems and stuff like that. And I left home. I ran away from home just to be with this guy. And I disowned my family. I didn't speak <laughs> for my family for almost a year. And I came back pregnant. What? Yeah. Oh, so that's your oldest son. That's my oldest son. So it was my crazy teenage. <laughs> Something beautiful came out of it. At but least. Something amazingly beautiful came out of it. So that was the first crazy thing. No, I wait, hold on, um, Steffi, hold on with the second one. Let's see if anybody has dared to share their experiences because we really want to know. <laughs> I'm going to read the comments. I'm going to start reading some of the comments and, and just start thanking all those who are here with my clan thing from the beginning. Hi, Joel, welcome, Tisha, Maviki, Monchka, Momo, Adeline, Cheryl. Holly, Rachel, oh my gosh, thank you guys. Angel, Michelle, welcome. Ba Atunche from Cameroon, from Federal Quarters, Boya. Hey, <laughs> thank you for wrapping my quartier. <laughs> I, I, I'm from Federal Quarters, Boya, too. Um, uh, Jackie's watching from Cameroon. Hi, Jackie, thank you. Sha, hi. Um, so I'm going to go down. Hi, Extra P, Victoria Cooper, I think I mentioned that. So I'm going to go down and read some. Aisha says, wow, beautiful storyline. Real life challenges indeed. We'll definitely watch. Aisha, you will not regret one minute Thank you spent from that. You will not regret it. You will love yes. the movie. No, yes. And uh, DJ Takeaway says, those children with discourage are not trying to. Oh, dear. They sh okay. I can't understand that. You know what he's trying to say is those, those kids are discouraging for, to disrespect their dad like that. Oh, oh I see. I see. Thank you. Know, you. Um. Oh, thank you. Hilda says, great, a fab job. Thank you so much. Um, so Tessie is asking, so Mbango be get charm. Now charm be make our way John go colo crystal on the how. And I just Why do we always ask that question when a man is in love if the woman has charmed the guy. <laughs> Why do we ask the reverse if the if the man has charmed the lady? Stephanie, that's a conversation for another day. Why is it that if a man truly loves his wife, we think that something, some mystical thing must be involved? Let's have that conversation, guys. I will be glad to participate in the comment section where you have. <laughs> Mbole says, Steve, saving Bango, it is sweet my heart, really, right? That thing was so cute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay. Um, so, uh, Bangoi village is not dying. <laughs> It's 
<laughs> but let's say I'm going to the village to look for my John. But let's just hope that you can find him in whichever, whichever city every, you are. Every lady needs a John in her life. <laughs> you don't have, I hope you don't have to go that far to find him. <laughs> um, what does the Colette say something? Come back home at 2 a.m. I think she's she's responding. She's to something crazy. Guys, I'm waiting. I can't really see your love. comments. What have you done for love? That's downright embarrassing. We want to know exciting different let's know um i hate what's this comment i hate waking up early more so at 5 a.m to cook ah but first love got me waking up to cook food for a guy i'm making sure he had the best of meals package when i think about it now i clap my hands see eh? the things i love will make you too i'm telling you crazy <laughs> I want to hear your, your experiences. Come on now, let's share. This is the woman experience. It's only women. Let's you, you have to share here. your own notes. You have to share your own <laughs> You're not sharing that you're sharing your reading and laughing. Uh, Wendy says, John, them no day these days. <laughs> John, they're not <laughs> John, they're not day. We need John. There's some so Johns out there, just some modern, you know, civilized Johns. <laughs> Where do we find these modern civilized Johns? Maybe tell us so that our younger sisters can go find them. They're out there. It's just that like these days, you know, we the young girls, we just want to find the perfect package. We have all these things that we've just, you know, on our checklist, the kind of man we want. And when you start mm -hmm. checking all those things, ticking all those things, you miss the right person in front of you. There's no perfect human. There's no perfect human. There's exactly. no perfect human. So just <laughs> scarcity for John D. Okay, well, I hear you. So go and share your second your your second uh, story so that maybe it'll give people more courage to share. But thank you, Shav, for that. That was really funny. <laughs> mm, number two, this one is so embarrassing. <laughs> go on, we got you. Don't worry, it's women. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was crazy in love with this guy and has I got his name tattooed on my butt. Oh this picking nabat pikino <laughs> Now I wanna see your butt <laughs> Well the tattoo is no longer there, bird. You know, I had it, you know, covered up and all of that, but hmm. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> coming to my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I wanted to prove to him, you know, that he was my one and only, you know. I can, you know, I can go all lengths for you. I even get your name on my butt, you know. Hey. So every you time know? you hit that button, that's my butt. <laughs> oh my god, that's oh my god, I feel your embarrassed. And it was nice, but like a really big, you know. <laughs> Why did you even know about tattoos? I'm hoping that is those tattoos that they used to do, cashew nuts, not the real, no. not the, the real deal. thing. The, hey. real, the real deal. I mean, I have a couple of tattoos, so getting that, you know, was not any any big deal to me. It uh -huh. wasn't something new to me. So it was my own way of showing him that, you know, I'm lawyer, sir. I got you. <laughs> And he ended up, and did he end up not in short? Let's never go that far. If he ended up not well, being guess working. what? The relationship we broke up, and I stayed with the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's embarrassing. I, mean, I hope you didn't get yeah. another boyfriend until you got rid of that tattoo. No, uh, no, <laughs> I, I can't even go that direction anymore. <laughs> Oh Let's my God, that's say. hilarious, Stephanie. <laughs> um, um, my takeaway says, my friend bought a textbook for a girl back in secondary school, even before he could afford his love. Love. So they've probably given him his pocket money and he's used <laughs> and he's used to it. Bola is laughing at you. Chai, Stephanie, sa, master. That's Listen, the um, pain. I'm not ashamed to say it, but I'm a big time lover. Girl. When I love, I love. <laughs> of course you love. You had a baby and you had a big ass tattoo on your butt. Of course exactly. you love. Exactly. I'm kind of like an extremist to some extent. <laughs> um, yeah. Almost says, I hate her walking. I walk so what is here is the money. I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> My crazy side. Ah, uh, so he's, he was like at this bench. I beg, how many people were like at this bench in their time? What did I <laughs> oh make you do? Um, Diana says that is an everlasting stamp. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. so <laughs> she's 
you got it covered, right? You covered it up. Yeah. Everybody's laughing at you, but <laughs> love my girl. Goodness gracious, Stephanie, your parents have suffered though. <laughs> I was a rebel. I was a rebel, you know. I was a rebel growing up. I was a rebel. Kind of oh. a little bit spoiled, only child and all of that. So I was and crazy. Then, now you're a mom to two boys. Yeah, you, know, you are mom to two. You know, so I'm a little bit like before they want to do anything, I'm just like, don't even try. <laughs> I know what you're doing already. <laughs> Oh, Stephanie, say so try love him, make person colon be small. Marie Colon and say Adeline says, says Steph, your head don't shake one dance. Lucky guy, he <laughs> must have been eating off the pot. <laughs> right. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, says Stephanie, I'm falling in love with your innocence. Oh, you oh my god, I was very naive at that time. <laughs> She says, well done, girl, for sharing. Uh, Emmanuel says, I beg Stephanie, they need to clean you with almost so that that guy. <laughs> Who said me to share? <laughs> no, that is brilliant. I could you never have imagined. You guys are laughing at Stephanie. Share yours now. Let's let's all laugh together. <laughs> let's laugh at your em embarrassing stories. <laughs> Some people said, said they, are, they became like a this bed. They walked all over here one day. Steph had a oh. big ass tattoo on her butt. Um, mm. Who else? Somebody took his, probably his poor pocket money to go and buy books for another girl. Come on, girls. Aisha, what is your own story? What have you done for love? Tessie, <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> DJ Tegebe, what's yours? <laughs> While we're thinking about that, eh? I'm going to... Uh, I want to post something that I read on um, on on Twitter. So this this guy, there was a guy who who wrote a long post on Twitter a few must have been a few years ago, I think. And uh, I'm just gonna just give me a minute while <laughs> while I share it with you guys. While I bring it up, I'm going to play another clip of um, Saving Bangu some of the things the extent in john's case of what he went how far he went for love and steph is going to explain it to us after the clip John, you want to come over here? Hi, John, you want to come over here? John, I'll be a big brother. I'll come now, i help you. You want to know what I did, I like? Uh huh. Just tell me, please, with that book, with that blood, D. I'll help you. Come over here! John, I can't ever help you. I want to help you, and I help her. Tell me, please, with that book for that bloody. I can't go for you. Okay. You go be so. So without giving away too much, Steph, just tell us a little. That's how far John went for love. Oh my God, John went through a lot of things for love in this movie, and John is um, this typical guy who would just do things not because the lady requested, not because he's trying to impress the lady, not because he wants to show off, but but because he understands that he's the only hope this girl has. He's the only one who can help this girl through whatever it is that she's going through. So John is just that kind of person 
was placed in that girl's life to help her through what she was going through. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> I want to read some people's comments of some of the things they did for love. Extra P says, me, I fought with my girlfriend's brother because he was appointing me to see my girl. All those who stole their parents' money and food to this boy, own up now. Angel, I oh like no, that. Oh no. Own up. <laughs> A friend paid me with puff puff for, for 50 francs in secondary school to write a love letter for him to give his guest. Hey. People don't talk for Oh my God. <laughs> That is so funny. Well, anyway, I like this. She says, well, Stephanie, all those things molded you into this very confident and great entrepreneur you are today. I admire your confidence, girl. I'm sure so many people are falling Thanks in so love. Much, Aisha. Thank you. <laughs> so are falling in love with you now. So let's 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 all um read this and then tell me what you think. So a guy on Twitter, it must have been a few years ago, he wrote this um eulogy in a way. No, not eulogy, this praise thing about his soon to be wife, just to tell us what he loved about her and the reasons why he was marrying this girl. And this is what he said. He said, I want to share 10 things about this woman before we wed this weekend. When I met her, I had no he had no place to stay. I was sleeping on the couch at a friend's house, and she knew I found a place and she helped to pay my rent for months. She got me my first car. Um, laptop got spoiled, needed it so much. She re she repaired it and she gave me hers. She covered most costs for our dates for a year. She invite invested in our first two businesses together and opted for me to run them full time. I never met her mom until when I brought my family to meet hers. She celebrated and congratulated every penny I made at the time, even when it was as little as $10. She supported everything I was trying to do to make ends meet, whether it earned us money or not. Though I'm very stable and all that now, I know she doesn't really care about those things. She cares about me solely. I know she'd give me anything in the world if she had to, because she has proved over and over again, over and over again. And he ended up saying, this is the kind of woman I am marrying. So I'm asking you guys, I'm still you, Steph, I'm asking the, uh, our audience, is that love? What is he marrying that girl for? Is he marrying that girl because he loves her? Is that really love? What do you think, Steph? For me, I think this girl was in a position where she could help the guy to become the man that she wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, some girls, you meet some girls that are going through their own difficulties and you guys struggle together. Mm -hmm. right to build you know your relationship build whatever you guys want to build together and you meet some girls who come from a well-to-do background and you come from a poor, poor background and if mm -hmm. this girl truly loves you she will do everything it takes to make you to be the man that she wants for mm -hmm. herself and to match her level so her family will not cause any you know any strain or anything concerning mm -hmm. her relationship or the marriage or whatever it is so for me, I personally feel like if I was in the position this girl was in, that is what I would do to somebody that I love. I mm. don't think it's overdoing. I don't think um, whatever. Now it depends if the guy is taking advantage of her, but we clearly see here that this guy appreciates everything that she's been doing for him and they're eventually getting married, which means everything worked out well for them. So when, do, when does it stop being love? Anyway, let me first ask. Is to the audience because I have already gotten enough responses. Is to you is that love? What 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 he's saying? Why is he marrying her? Is he marrying her because he reciprocates her feelings, or he's marrying her because of all those ten things and maybe more that she's done for him? Do you think that from his end that's love? For me, that's love, and this is why. When it's a guy doing all of these things for a girl, because this happens every day. You meet mm -hmm. a girl, you see mm -hmm. a girl who meet a guy who is mm -hmm. well to do. The guy is going to take care of her. If she's, she doesn't have a place to stay, the guy will get her a place to stay. If she needs a laptop, like the guy had a problem with the laptop, the guy will get her the laptop. Mm -hmm. If she wants to start a business or something, the guy is going to help her to invest, the business and allow, uh, invest in the business and allow her to run the business. The mm -hmm. guy is basically going to transform this girl's life and make her to be the woman that he wants. Mm -hmm. That is love. Okay. So why is it that when it's the reverse, 
we don't see it as love. We see it as the guy taking advantage of the girl when he still ends up with marriage. It's kind of double standards, right? I don't know about double standards in this case. I mean, let's look at it in isolation. We come from a patriarchy and our men are, are raised to be providers. Our yeah. men are raised to be to be the, the head of the family and all. And I, I notice a lot that when our men have made it, they put their wives off a lot of times in a situation where the woman probably doesn't have to work. Like they want to make their women comfortable. A man... For, from a man's point of view, those years where he's going through a woman, he's with a woman who is who has taken on the role of provider. Mm -hmm. Does it, especially for the men who are watching, does it affect the way you see this woman? Does it make you feel a little bit um, inferior? Does it does it affect your feelings? Uh, especially because if your friends, especially your male friends, know they will be laughing at you. That's a given. A few of them will would probably support you, but the majority of boys I know will be like, see that one that's feeding off a woman. It becomes a mockery. Does it affect the way you see her? And in a situation where you do end up marrying her, are you marrying her for the right reasons or you're marrying her because uh, this is my day one, man. She's been with me. She's from the beginning. Uh, it will be maybe from, from, um, Conscience, 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 that's the word, conscience point of view where you're thinking, okay, if I drop this woman now, I would, it would come back to haunt me in life. Is that, is that how it is for men? Uh, let me read what some people say. Wait, hold on, Steffi. Let me just read what it is love and ap ap appreciation for a woman who love and believe in him. Yep. Okay, I think that application. Yeah, so, um, Oh, this is still Mimi. It's uh, Kali says it's questionable for me. His own love, I mean. Yeah, uh, Kali, please ex expand. Tessie says facts. I don't know what that is. And Wendy says it's pity, pity because she's been with you because she's been the provider, and you feel like if you leave her now, maybe bad luck will be will follow you for the rest of your life or what? <laughs> um, but he says, I concur with Stephanie. So that's love to him. And he's a guy. He loves her. Too many have had same and moved on and abandoned the girl. He has no duty to repay, but he chose her. Okay. So Angel sees that as love. Okay. I think I've read that comment. Um, I say it's love. This is from a guy. Sometimes you fall in love with someone because of who they are, not just how they look. I think if he never loved her from the start, he might have later on and after the love and care she showed. I think that's real love. Okay, wow. Um, I think the guy loves her and is just calling a spade a spade. Not every woman or man can openly appreciate the things their other half do for them. And believe it or not, resources fuel love. They do, actually. Resources do fuel love. Um, why is some woman them thinks that only man feed do one for woman? That's a question that you and Stephanie are asking. Exactly. <laughs> Double standards. A man should love the woman. A woman should respect and not overdo the lover role. Okay, see, we're coming to that. Goretti, this is Emmanuel. Women are tired, though. In fact, <laughs> if <we just> come, <laughs> women will be the ones to be paying our dowry. Who is this? <laughs> Men have suffered in these sacrifices, so. <laughs> is my, question. my question is what did he do for her i wish he could say his own sacrifices for me relationship is give and take we must not always give money but we can also sacrifice our time devotion attention and just being there for the other partner it appears as though the woman had to make all these efforts and i think that's what i got from her from that because he was listing all these things that she'd done i was thinking mm, okay Anyway, he must have done something right, though, for him to that stay. Is what I, that's what I was just about to say. This is yeah. a man who is celebrating his right or die chick, who is mm. appreciating everything that she's done for him. The sacrifices, the love, the risks that she took doing all these things. Because sometimes it's women, the women out there will do these things and the guys will still, you know, go off with another girl. We'll I think up another girl. we see it every day. Steph, especially, Steph, I... especially living abroad, you see every day a woman mm -hmm. will bring in a guy from back from Cameroon. She'll bring the guy here, you know, make sure the guy settles, gets a job, everything. And by the time he's fine, pap, he dumps her and moves on to the next girl. Even so, in Cameroon, we see. We do, Stephanie. So now think... this is the guy celebrating mm -hmm. his ride or die chick. Mm -hmm. This is from his angle. This is his 
point of view, right? Celebrating this woman. We haven't heard from the woman celebrating the guy, but if they're getting married, then it means this guy did something right. Anyway, I think the, the, the only thing that she's left to do is to tattoo his name across her butt, because <laughs> I mean, even this list of sacrifices that she's made, man, the only thing missing is that tattoo and, and she's good. <laughs> oh my god. Aisha says the guy may have had secondary intentions. However, we need to accept the fact that some guys are genuinely broke and may end up falling in love with a girl who can provide for them. We need to be balanced in our judgment. See, that's the reason why it's judgment, Aisha. We are not balanced when it comes to judgment. <laughs> Yes, I mean, the, the truth is, you know, everyone has their point of view and it's their right to think the way they need to think. But, you know, we're just sharing our thoughts about what the guy wrote, right? Certainly. Not, you know, agree on the same thing. But then, this guy's point brings me to the next thing where I, I read a lot uh, um, about overcompensation. So a lot of women do these things to overcompensate for something. So overcompensation is when you feel, this is what psychologists uh, define it as, when you feel deficit in your own being, so you try to make up for it by going overboard to please others. Exactly. So when, when is it, um, how thin is the line between overdoing it for love and overcompensating? Where, where do we draw the line? Or where, how can we identify the line? When do you know that? Or what do you think? When do you know that, oh, okay, maybe I'm overdoing this? Because there are a lot of uh, um, um, girls who you've heard them, people describe that one, that one, I'm Mugu for that boy. You understand? Yeah. Or that one, yeah, yeah, or, for that girl. yeah, or that girl, they overdo, they overdo them. I, I, they, Basically, they're being used. That's, that's, that because we, because we can identify, even though we, we probably can't coin the term, but we know that what she's doing is overcompensating. We can identify that. So when is it, when do you think, because you said in the boy's case, that was love from the girl's point of view, isn't that overcompensating for something? Doesn't it, doesn't it look like that to you? Well, now that depends. That's why I said we're just getting the guy's side, right? We have we don't we've not gotten the girl's side. We've not gotten her friend's side because there's me, you, and there's them who see the relationship. And sometimes we cannot see a relationship. Other people see it better than we do. For me, I feel like overcompensating someone it's it starts from you, because there are people who feel who have this inferiority complex already in them, and they feel like when they're in a relationship where they know that. This person does not love me the way that I love them, or this person, I'm not deserving of this person. That's mm -hmm. when you start overdoing things because you want to win that person's love. You're scared of being alone. You don't want this person to leave you. You know, all these things, all these insecurities that push you to do this thing. And mm -hmm. true love is real. You see it and you know that these people are in love. You, they don't, you cannot fake it. Mm -hmm. You cannot fake it because for how long will you fake it? Mm -hmm. You know? Basically, when you're being taken for granted, you're doing things for someone, the person is taking you for granted, the way the person treats you, the person disrespects you and all those kind of things. But you keep doing because you want to keep that person. You want to buy that person's love. You want to please that person. Like mm -hmm. you're basically putting yourself on the ground and working on top of you. Mm -hmm. That's overcompensating for me. Something that is not reciprocated. Something that does not, you don't, you give, but you never receive. You're just giving, giving, giving. And the person is not giving anything back, whether it's emotions, whether it's appreciation, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. That 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 actually is overcompensating. But when you are in that situation, I mean, especially for those of us in the audience, have you ever been in that situation that you look back on it and, and look back on it and think, I overcompensated. This wasn't love. This was just this was overcompensation. Overcompensation, and um. Emerald Sinclair, who is a love and relationship coach, she says that you overcompensate because of because you're trying to hide the pain of rejection or feeling yeah, not that. good enough. That's yeah, why you overcompensate. But um, but most times you develop that feeling as a child. Yeah, it always she, comes from deep within, you know. Yeah, some some experience within your childhood that you've grown up with. Yeah. And you can see it a lot. Some of the, the things, the ways you can see that people overcompensate because it's not only in love, in life generally. You know those people who, in every two or 
the third sentence that they, 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 they make is, oh, I, you know, I work for, I don't know, I'm and Sang Young, or I don't know. They, they want to show off. I work for this they want to show company, off. You they know, I own this business without you even asking. But I drive a van. They want to show off. seem like this person that you should respect. They want to impose the respect on you. Yeah. So those are some of the ways that we we see that. I mean, I think I'm I'm asking the court audience is, do you do you recognize that when people behave that way? Do you recognize that? Uh, you, you do we only term it because we tend to call it show off. But do you recognize that? Oh, this one not inferiority complex. Oh yeah. Do you? <laughs> um. Colette is she's saying, okay, I think she's responding to somebody. Uh, Tessie says, when you get into a relationship with somebody, you get in for good or at least wish. wish. So you have to work together to get to where you would love to be or where you aspire to. There is nothing like overdoing in a relationship as far as I'm concerned. Really, Tessie? No, there is. There is because a relationship is give and take. It's supposed to be 50-50 ideally. But obviously, it's never that because there's a lot of compromises we make a lot of sacrifices yeah, we make. Yeah. but you make those sacrifices knowing that you will get them back in return and you make even, even just appreciation yeah you know? no even just appreciation even just love like thank you i love you and you mean it that's why you make those sacrifices because you should be making those sacrifices knowing that you will get something back if a man if you're in a relationship and you are honest to yourself you're watching this today and you're in a relationship and you are doing you are giving 70% of the give. You are the giver. 70% of, of the give in the relationship is coming from you. And there is no take in terms of he's not giving back. He's giving back just 30%. You need I to mean, realize it that. Financial. It, must, it, it can be love or gratitude or appreciation. It must not be financial. You know. What, what did she say here? Um, Crystal says, I concur, Tessie, it takes two to tango. Both parties have a role to play to get their relationship to where they want it to be. But Tessie is saying something here. Let people glorify their sweat. I have no problem with that. If I feel like oh, they're showing off, I either back off or work hard to be like them. So Tessie, this is not jealousy. This no, no, is no, not, no, 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 no. This this is is not what we're saying. Exactly. This, this is not what we're saying. We're saying that we need to for ourselves even to understand when we are overcompensating in an area just so that again it's for our mental health just so that we know that okay or we are honest to ourselves that this particular direction i'm taking is not right or the like, action i'm like doing i should be doing action most people most people who are in that situation they know they know they're in that situation mm -hmm. but they kind of like trick themselves to like Think that no, this is what it is when they know the truth. Mm -hmm. When they know that I'm being used, but just because they really love this person and they don't want to lose that person, they don't really care about being used mm -hmm. or they don't want to accept the truth. They don't want to accept it. Yeah. Hereta says, Tessie, you said work together. As long as you're working together and appreciating each other, then it's okay. And that's the key word. As long as you're working together, meaning that, as long as it's reciprocated. Yes. Not that you are the main giver. If you find yourself in a situation where you're the main giver, something's not right. We need, we need, you need to be honest to ourselves and identify that, and think about it, give it some thought. Because if you're doing that, what are you overcompensating for? You may be doing it even at work. You may be over. You may be the one that um, every time they want to offer, who wants to stay late, they want to offer over time. You are trying to please that boss so desperately. You, yeah. you could be, yeah, you could be doing it on your children. You're in, you, you, you cuddle them too much. You, you spoil you them, them to the eyes of everyone and even maybe to your spouse. You need to identify that kind of behavior and find out why do I behave like this? Why do right, I do right. this? Yeah, that, I mean, there needs to be a fine line between this thing. You know where to stop. And That's you know when to ask for what you deserve because when you go out there and you see relationships there's nothing wrong with a man spoiling with his wife if he's in a better position than her and there's nothing wrong with a woman spoiling the husband or boyfriend you know vice versa there's nothing wrong with that but the least you need when you're going you know when you're going out there doing all this thing for the other person is first appreciation it's first they need to love you the way you love them 
Yeah. It needs to be two ways. It needs to be, you know, they need to re uh, reciprocate it. <laughs> oh my God, reciprocate. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my no God. worry. Me too. It's a tongue twister, that word. Yeah. yeah. No, true. I mean, like, for example, in your case now, you got a tattoo. What are you getting in, in, in return? That bastard. He didn't get anything. <laughs> 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 you, you know what I mean? And so what we're trying. <laughs> so I guess I was overcompensating in this whole <laughs> situation. That's it. That's it. I, Over that's trying to prove that I'm in love. I'm in love. You know. Yeah, that's what we're trying to say here. So in the case of 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 John, for those who have seen Saving Bango. Uh, in the case of John, you could see that it was clearly love. He truly just loved this girl. Although when I looked at it again, I thought, mm, maybe he was overcompensating because he had just found his safe place, the background he was coming from. I mean, without letting, uh, giving too much of the story, his background wasn't solid in the love department. So maybe he just found this, my, his, his space, his, his, uh, I call it sacred space where he could express his love, where he could be himself, it's where he could share his dream. And so he was overcompensating in the actions he did because he didn't want to lose that. You could look at it from that angle. We could look at it from that angle or we could mm -hmm. look at it from this angle that he just knew that there was no one else who could be there for her, for him. And, Ooh. you know, he was in love with her and he was worried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mimi said, you know, I'm always just trying to be this, you know. <laughs> Let me read so this. Tattoo, but I will follow this girl. <laughs> and Rita says, unfortunately, women are mostly at the receiving end, so I would rather the man's love is 60%. And that is why uh, our mothers advise us that don't marry for love. Marry a man that loves you 100% because your love will grow. I think that that, that advice is wisdom. <laughs> well, what do you agree? Are you reading comments or what do you what do you think? When I, when you're getting married, they tell you marry a man who loves you. Don't marry a man that that doesn't love you as much as you love him. Marry a man yes. who loves you even oh, more yes. than you love him. Yeah. Yeah. I want to read this. Aisha says, my dear, some ladies overdo, hun. They carry bags of cocoa yams, etc., from the village and take to the guy's house. They cook fufu, a chew, you name it for the guy. They clean, do laundry and all. The guy still goes in the background and laughs at the girl behind their back. That to me is true. Yeah. I've stories like that. I mean, when I was in the university, right, there was this thing about Baminda girls, like the guy will have his girlfriend that he loves, who is from, who is probably the, one of these Francophone girls from Duwala or Yaoundé, and then he will have this Anglophone girl and he'll be saying, Master, I like my graffiti him. They come, they get potatoes, so they, bed, they get all kinds of them, they'll cook you chop, they'll wash your clothes, they'll do this. But his heart is not there. So his heart, like his heart is somewhere else for a girl who does not give a shit about him, you know, and he's just here yeah, using this other girl. So I've seen, I mean, I've seen cases like that. That is sad, isn't it? But that's the truth. That's what I think, that's what we're trying to get people to be aware that there is a line. When There's you a think line. There is a line. And, and you when need you to... feel that way, and when you feel like, you you just keep giving 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 and you're not receiving anything back you need to pause yeah because that's a red flag you need to ask your, yourself some some good questions and you need to be brutally honest with yourself for your sake because after that the relationship becomes toxic and you start feeling insecure all these insecurities start building mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's you know 100 percent and 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 what i want to add to that is you you need to look into it. once you identify that and you think okay i think i'm overcompensating in this relationship the next thing you need to start asking yourself is why am i overcompensating why? What this is, is wrong with me yeah why am I and doing this? this what am i afraid of yeah exactly what am i afraid of what's the fear what what pain or am i trying to to suppress by doing this yeah. for this person because it's not about the person whether they love you or not it's about you first it's about you first why are you putting yourself in that position exactly exactly so think about it when you're thinking about oh i love this guy too much how far how far are you willing to go for love how far have you gone for love take a moment and think why am i going that far and the truth is we always see the red flags but we always want to ignore them Mm -hmm. Once your things blow up. Yep. So true. 
So, <laughs> uh, Mimi says, don't worry about those guys. They know now what Bamenda girls are made of. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, but this has, this has been great. But anyway, there are some healthcare tips that I found, uh, that I read, I found in my research that you should do if you think, if you're honest to yourself, if you're ready to have that honest conversation with yourself, there are some things that you can do to to get your mental state right, to be able to address that little child within you that who, who experienced that pain that you're trying to suppress. And yeah. again, this uh, love and relationship coach said, uh, uh, Emerald Sinclair says, you need to start small, practice self-care. When she says practice self-care, she's asking you to do, when you do one thing for yourself, one thing for yourself every day. So if you find that, Oh, no, I have to go home. I have to cook for him. My man only eats fresh food. No, I really need to stop and think, okay, he only eats fresh food. What do I eat? Do one thing for yourself or no. Instead of rushing home to cook fresh food, maybe I go to the spa. Maybe I go buy myself something. Maybe I get myself, go to the, the pub, whatever. But do something for you in place of that. That's how you begin to... Um, untangle yourself from that kind of behavior yeah change your perspective because they always say it takes two to tango right so ask yourself i'm doing this what is he doing in return yeah if i when i do when i've done this for him what, what how did he reciprocate i'll be honest to yourself be brutally you honest to be honest with yourself because if you're not honest with yourself you will not get these answers you know get you know this this wake up call that you need yes and also Slow down, just pull back and see if he's going to do the same thing. Just don't do those things. Say, say on his birthday, let me give you an example. On his birthday, you probably go and hire a yacht and you, you do a white party with all his friends. And then on your birthday, he's like, oh, babe, sorry, I have to work late. Can we just have a late night dinner? That, that, that's, that, that goes well for the man and the woman. Next birthday, don't go all out and see how he will react to that. If he noticed or not and see what he will do. In return, if you don't do same, you know, that's how you begin to slowly disentangle because what all of this is just to, for us to be aware, be aware of when we're doing things for love or not, yeah. okay. or we are overcompensating. Let's be able to distinguish between the two. So let's ask ourselves those hard truths. And when we are honest to ourselves, then there are, there are so many ways we can learn to untangle ourselves. Okay. Yeah, um, me, I, want... I just believe like if you love yourself, you're confident and you know what you're worth, you'll be able to to know the kind of relationship you, you're in, determine the kind of relationship that you want for yourself and what is healthy for you. So that's what yeah. I Yeah, but so many of us are not that confident. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's true. A lot of us, we're not raised to be confident women. We are learning it as we grow and we're trying to pass it down to our daughters. A lot of us, we're, we're raised to, your husband is, your, when you're in a relationship, basically we are raised to be the woman that a man will marry. That's what we're raised to be. We're raised to be a woman that the man will marry. So you think that overdoing it, overcompensating is part of the job spec. To be that to be that kind of woman so that's how we're raised and and we are beginning to learn that maybe not maybe not maybe let's find ourselves in that like you know someone rightly said yeah that everything that i went through in my you know very young age actually shaped me to the person that i became because in my very early age i understood what i wanted or what i did not want i understood the things that i did and i asked myself questions why am i doing this you know, who am I putting myself in this situation and all of those things. So they actually help me because, you know, when you're doing all of those things is because you, you know, there's this complex in you, you're not that confident. You think you need to please this person. You need, you need to, you know, but it gets to that point where you're like, you know what? I know my word. If they love me, they have to love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. I will compromise. You know, mm -hmm. we will work together to build the relationship that we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Bell says, I think many times we're very scared to be alone. It seems easier to stay with someone who treats you badly than take your chances and opt out with hopes of finding someone who treats you how you deserve. That's why people stay married but separated for years in misery, even after the kids are all grown. Oh, my God, darling, that is a conversation that we need to have. There are so many marriages where they are separated but living together. Hundreds. 
Hundreds. that's kept to be alone. There are so many yeah. people who are in situations where they know that it's not working for them, it's not healthy to them, but they just want to be together. Maybe sometimes because of the kids, they want the kids to grow and be a certain age, you know, so they put themselves in that position. Maybe sometimes because they feel like, you know what, I can just deal with this shit because it will be more costly for me, you know, if we separate, you know, mm -hmm. so let's just you know, and all those things. I mean, so many, yeah. so, so many uh, reasons why people stay in, you know, things that are not working, situations that are not working for them. Yeah, but before we even find ourselves in those situations that are not working, let us, again, try and understand when we're overcompensating in a relationship or when we're yeah. doing out of love. Because understanding that as well will really strengthen your relationship because then you can have honest conversations with your partner. You need to have partner. honest conversations with your partner. Some yes. people don't have conversations in their relationship. Yeah, yeah, so communication. Cool. We're all going to learn that. Very essential. Very. <laughs> We're all learning that now. Um, I think this is a good starting point. We're educating ourselves and others. Yes, oh, we are. And that's, that's, that's the whole point of the woman's ex uh, woman experience with Gorita. And for all those who have just joined us at this late stage, I can see you. Thank you all for joining. This is the woman experience with Stephanie Toom. Um, she's a producer. She's a Cameroonian celebrity. She's the <laughs> producer. <laughs> <laughs> that one you must own that you have word. Told me to own it. I will you try must to own, own it. it. Own the word. Yeah, our Cameroonian celebrity and uh, one of the producers of the film Saving Bango, a brilliant film which we've talked about uh, earlier on in the show. So if you are just joining us now, after this, please go back and watch it. Also, if you want to share this to people who are not on Facebook. After this, we up upload it on our YouTube channel, which is still the Goretti Experience. So please go on there, watch the show, share it to your friends and family, and uh, let's spread the word about the, the woman experience. I appreciate you in advance for doing that, and I thank you for joining us tonight. So let's continue our conversation. Oh, also, please don't forget to subscribe on that subscribe. YouTube channel. And don't forget to, to like the, the woman experience now, guys. Come on, we are like a... 2,000 some nights, 3,700 some nights. I don't have up to 1,000 likes. So please support, support the mission. <laughs> support the mission. Right. Like on the notification button. So that when yeah. you know, episode, you just get it. You get it. So thank you. Thank you in advance for that. Thank you. So yeah. Um, Esther says, great show, Goretti. Please permit me. I think she shared a link about... Um, psychologies magazine or so so if you want to learn about these things from professionals because we're not professionals oh, here yeah, we're we're, sharing our experience. we share our experiences to learn from each other's experiences you know so this is what we do here and we we we, we invite the professionals if you have something to say if you'd like to join us and let's have this some conversations from a professional angle please get in touch just send me a message or slide in the dm and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Joel says, I'm definitely learning from this live. Thank you. Oh, no. Thank you, Joel, for tuning in. We appreciate it so much. Steffi, so I think we've said as much as we could say on us identifying when it's love. We're not saying that love is not real. Of course, love is I'm, real. Of course. I'm even in love now. <laughs> love is real. <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. The blocks will tell us in a few months. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Trusted blocks. Oh, but thank you. No, no, thank you. And thank you. We have also learned, learned a lot. We are doing ladies' talk. Yes, Mimi, that's what we're doing here. We're here just talking and we're doing ladies' talk. Um, so, Steffi, before we, we we go, let's go back to Saving Bango and talk about our film industry for those people who really don't know um, what 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 is one thing that you want to say to those watching about the film industry, the Cameroon film industry? Um, what I'll say about the, the Cameroon film industry is um, it's a growing industry. There's a lot of work that has been put into this industry. And we have so many potentials in this industry, so many talented actors, so many talented technicians in this industry. We're putting in hard work every day, every day to make sure that we bring out the best that we can bring quality movies with the little that we have, because most of these investments that we do for these movies, it's, it comes from our pockets. We don't have investors who are coming and, you know, just putting in money in the, the movie industry. 
I mean, I know that we're limited in some ways, especially when it comes to the distribution and marketing structure of the Cameroon film industry. That is something that needs to be really worked out, like worked on so that we can get our products out there straight to the public when it comes out, especially when it comes to cinemas, when it comes to movie platforms, our own movie platforms, so that we can be making the money 100%, you know, not mm -hmm. just putting it on Amazon and all of that, where we can actually have the movie turning back inside Cameroon, right? And um, we need support from the public. You know, it is hard. It is so hard for Cameroonians to support their own. That's something, that's a mentality that we need to change. We need to, I cannot tell you guys that, no, I haven't had support from Cameroonians for this movie. I started having support way back home before even coming to the US to, you know, promote the movie and all of that. But we need to start appreciating our own. We need to start celebrating them the way we celebrate others out of Cameroon. You know, we need to follow them, encourage them, just leave a good job. You guys are doing great. Just leave something that makes them feel like, oh my God, let's just keep putting in, you know, more effort and all of that. We need support. And with that support, we will keep, you know, doing what we're doing with the little that we have. We'll keep, you know, sacrificing and paving the way for the younger generation we're going to come because we are the people who are sacrificing right now to make this industry grow. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to enjoy you know really enjoy like the genevieve started back in the days is now that are you know you know ripping off what they've you know planted so that's what we're doing now but we cannot do this on our own we mm -hmm. need support from the public we need support from investors business mm -hmm. people you know and um we need to also work together within the industry to build the kind of industry that we have that we want because we cannot only be saying we want this when the inside is rotten because mm -hmm. it also goes with that so we need to work it's an inside and outside job to build the industry so that's mm -hmm. what i have to say so you guys keep supporting us and um you know just doing what you're doing right now with this movie the next projects that are going to come out put the same energy support let's just keep pushing pushing and pushing you know if mm -hmm. we have four movies like saving mango out of cameroon each year this industry will explode in the next five years yeah, that, um, talking about this support, uh, for those who are young filmmakers or potential investors who are watching, how were you able to get a giant multinational telco like uh, Orange to support your, mm -hmm. to come in during the marketing and promotional uh, part of your movie, how? Because I was really surprised because you always hear these stories that we have all of them, MTN, Orange and all these um, Nextel, and they don't invest in our movies at all. So I, how did you get them? All right, this is gonna be, you know, this is true story. Orange mm. actually reached out to me. Mm. Exactly. Orange reached out to me because they saw the way we're professional about this movie from the beginning, from mm -hmm. the auditions and everything. And we were already doing strong prom uh, promotions before the movie even came out. Mm -hmm. That is how Orange saw it because they had this, you know, plan to get into the, you know, movie industry and they needed, you know, to pick up a producer and her project and use them as a litmus test for, you know, for their, for their plan that they had. Mm -hmm. So they went over the internet and they started looking for films that were done in 2019, you know, and looking at the drive, the anticipation, the professionalism behind the team, you know, and all of that. And they picked Saving Bango because Saving Bango was trending. Mm -hmm. Saving Bango was really trending. So they picked Saving Bango off the internet and then they gave me a call. They told me, hey, this is what we have planned. This is what we want to do. And you know, the rest is history. That's amazing. I know, yeah. kudos to you guys because your digital footprint is very evident. You guys did a fantastic job. I've always said it like you on your own, even before Orange joined, the promotion was- Even before was, Orange joined, you know, yeah. Orange just helped facilitate like everything especially financially because you need the finance the finances yeah. to be able to push things to this level i will not like well, we need, we need need finances to be able to do proper promotions you know and push it to every outlet you know out there yeah no you definitely do and so if you're watching i mean if you're watching and you're a filmmaker we need to we need to up the ante we need to get really professional we need to approach it as a business because if you pre present your business. film and package it's your production it's a business, first and foremost it's a business that's why of i keep course. telling people who keep saying oh we should put uh saving bango for free on youtube and stuff like that these are people who don't understand the business side of what we're doing we're not just doing this for show this mm -hmm. is business. These are millions that we've invested in this. 
you know. So yeah. we need to put it out there on platforms where you can purchase it or rent it or whatever and watch. And when we've exhausted, you know, every uh, opportunity out there and made money, now we can take it and put it on YouTube and say, hey, guys, have a blast. Yeah. <laughs> but before okay. then, we need to make money. Yes. We need to make money. Yeah. Also, um, how were you able to get it on Saving Bank on Amazon Prime for, for those who are watching? How did you get it on Amazon Prime? Uh, my co-executive um, producer, Julia, she already had an account. She's mm -hmm. produced movies before, so she already had um, an account on Amazon Prime, you know, so mm -hmm. we just followed that channel through her. So this is girl power. These girls are blazing the trail. Power. We're out here. We mean business. Julia yes. and myself, we mean business, and we will not stop until we reach our goals. Go around the world. Girls. <laughs> <laughs> in the near future thank you so much darling you've been a fantastic guest and i appreciate your time and i think we've all had a really brilliant time with stephanie so oh, thank you so much and good luck with saving bango for those who, so who, are, who are just joining in saving bango is currently showing on amazon prime uh, so just click on the the title saving bango and go watch it support the Cameroon film industry it's a really brilliant film we can't stress that enough for those who have been able to see some clips from it and those who have watched it i'm sure you you can attest to the brilliancy of the film and we just want to give a shout out to the producers stephanie and julia gam and to the director uh, mr Nkanyang kwai and to all of the people who are involved in the background, the cast, the yeah, crew, shout the, out the, to cast. Kanya kwai, the director shout out to Takong Delvis, the um uh, dop who mm -hmm. took the amazing amazing shots that we have for that movie you know mm -hmm. each and every person the the gaffer the sound guy the costume the makeup artist everyone yeah. who was involved in this project the assistants on set you know my location manager and production manager sigala love it you know just everyone the actors amazing actors you know going with me to that village living in those conditions for three weeks coming back everybody fell sick you know, <laughs> promoting till this moment, they're still promoting. You know, the team is still pushing the movie to this moment. It's not like when we used to do films and then it goes, you know, after the premiere, you know, all the actors or people involved in the project, they just turn their backs and just leave it with you, the producer, you know, and you're struggling on your own. But this, you know, the team has been working from day one till now, they still keep pushing, pushing, pushing. So it's been an amazing experience working with these guys and I've worked with them over and over again. I'm not an easy person to work with. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it came out great. You don't want to discourage great. them. That you don't want to yeah. discourage them. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm asking. somebody who knows what she wants. Yeah. And I want to work with people who give me the results. I'm I'm no I'm a no BS kind of person, you know. The real alpha female. <laughs> Some people are asking again if you're just joining us, please. It's showing on Amazon Prime. Amazon, on Amazon. US and Amazon, Amazon UK. US, US and UK. available very soon for Amazon, Canada, France, and um Germany. Yep. So yeah, so for your your reviewing it to be and what Steffi, Steffi, it's been a blast. It really has been a blast with you. And I thank you for your time. Thank you for honoring our invitation. One last word to all those who have had such a fantastic time with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had an amazing time sharing some of my personal embarrassing stuff, but hey, thank you guys for coming. I just want to plead with you guys to go to Amazon Prime Video for those in the US and the UK and watch mm -hmm. Saving Brangle. Let's promote our own, you know, let's give this movie the visibility that it deserves and, you know, invite your friends from other countries, you know, to watch it and tell them this is what we do in our country. We have something amazing happening in our film industry too. Mm -hmm. So there are other amazing Cameroon movies on Amazon as well. Encourage your friends to watch our stuff, you know, share with them, send the links to them in your WhatsApp groups, you know, and just make them watch it. Thank you, guys. So Thank you, Steph. Just stay backstage while I say goodbye to, to our guests. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a really uh, fun, <laughs> fun episode with Stephanie's hilarious stories. Uh, for those who have not joined, again, after this, I, we upload on YouTube. So you can watch it on YouTube on the Great Experience. That's our page. Or you can just watch, rewatch this on the Goretti experience when we are done. I really want to appreciate you today. We're talking about, we're talking about 
how far you would go for love. And we're trying to identify um, to ask the question, what's the line? When does it stop being love and it becomes overcompensating? And then we're trying to ask ourselves, what are we overcompensating for? Are we, are we, we need to, we're encouraging us to have those hard and truthful conversations with ourselves, to be honest to ourselves, to find out if we find ourselves in a situation, in a relationship most times, or even a work relationship, a professional relationship where we find that we are overcompensating, we should ask ourselves what pain, because the, the, I've been reading and I've been given a lot of quotes from Emerald Sinclair, who is a love and relationship coach. She's not a psychologist, but she's a love and relationship coach. And she says that we, we overcome, when we overcompensate, we're overcompensating to hide a pain within, a pain of not feeling worthy, a pain of feeling less than the other person. So why? We need to have those conversations with ourselves and find out why we are overcompensating. And then just maybe we can heal ourselves. We have to find all those ways. We have to be, I always say, you have to be very selfish in your pursuit for self in your pursuit to understand you, to know you, to find out what ticks you, what doesn't make you tick. You really need to be selfish in your pursuit of self, happiness, drive, and all the things that have to do with self so that you can be a better person for yourself. You can be a better person to your family. You can be a better person to your wider community and you can just, just be a better person in general. So thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate you. Please like our page, the woman, the Goretti experience, like our page. And um, if you're on YouTube and you're ever scrolling, just take a minute, go on the Goretti experience page and subscribe. We're working on a lot of content behind the scenes to add to this to show to, to offer you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you so much. And Bye-bye. I'll see you next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. with our guests. Thank you so much. Bye.